Josepha is a family member that I didn't know about. I know I have a great grandmother, but I was for many, many years unaware of even her name. And then uh, a few years ago, I found a collection of her letters. And then from that point, I made a decision to uh, understand who Josepha was, who, why these letters were written. Бачу, як сходить і заходить сонце. Бачу, як вечорі сходить місяць і ладні вечірні зорі. А де ж моя Яночка з ладною смішкою, що мене так тішила? And Yosefa was 76 years old when she was put onto the train and then sent to Kazakhstan and she was a mother of six children. Yosefa was repressed because she was given the classification parents of a traitor. So her son Alawazi was in the Polish police force and sent to this remote location in North Kazakhstan at Tubinsk. She was not in a penal prison gulag where she was doing hard work. She was in a remote settlement having to work and still pay for her rent and buy food. And from this remote location, Yusefa would write asking for the main requirements for continued survival, which was food and money. She was only writing to her daughters. <laughs> Ти мені пишеш, що я гніваюсь на тебе. О, єдина моя дитина, єдиний скарб мій, найдорожча моя коштовність. Ти нас годувала, ти нас одягала, ти нас втішала і найбільше з нас всіх працювала. А від батьків нічого не брала. Я все пам'ятаю. То за що ж мені на тебе гніватись? За твої добрі вчинки? Матір зла на своїх дітей не тримає. А про добро ніколи не забуде. І про добрі вчинки. Я твої солодкі слова забути не можу. Завжди я з тобою. А я не чекаю. Perhaps the the one letter that summarized the entire story which there is only the one letter was was the one envelope that was discovered. It has two functions. It's an envelope and a letter. Yusefa is writing in every available square centimeter. The words are squeezed in on every available bit of space. And this is addressed to her daughter, Maria Bodjak, the BSSR, the Belarus Socialist State Republic, and it is coming from Aktubinsk, which is Yusefa's address, which she writes in as the sender. So these two addresses represent the distances that this letter had to travel, two and a half thousand kilometers, and from the post stamps, the marks, we have two dates. One is dated the 21st of February 1941 and the second date is the 4th of March 
Josepha didn't date any letters. So we've had to judge the letters of what we think was the order in which they were written based on the content and the topics that are being talked about. So the earlier letters, she writes about her return and not to sell anything because she's, she's going to get, come back and she will need them for when she returns. She was still very much organizing the family. As the letters carry on, the tone changes and she doesn't think that she's going to make it back. And then it becomes a different set of, of letters of one of that she's losing hope. Vandio. Якщо забудете про мене, буде мені тяжко. Але зобов'язую тебе, татуся та Пьотричка, моїх наймиліших, і в найбільших муках не забувати. І це моє прохання завжди має лишатися з тобою. А якщо ти зараз його згубиш, то після смерті моєї сумління в тобі пробудеться. Ще раз прошу докласти зусиль, щоб мене до вас повернути. Вандю моя. Образ твій закарбований в серці моїм назавжди. Незважаючи на те, що забули мене. З великим болем на серці закінчую свої сердечні слова. Щиро любляча матір. I would think it's fair to say that those were probably the last letters, the ones in which she is making the strongest um, the strongest claim for, for help, um, the strongest cry to her children not to be forgotten. А що моя Ванда може? Я тебе більше от всіх любила і добру відплату тепер маю. Гелічка, вона така сирота з малими дітьми. І за помешкання платить, і за опал, І та дві посилки надіслала і маю від неї 180 рублів. А ви за помешкання не платите, і дітей годувати не треба, і 500 рублів маєш. І вам байдуже, що матір на чужині, далеко в Сибіру, поміж скелястик і високих гір, і вихорів страшних, має погибати без крихти допомоги. Голодна, холодна, а мою ванню ніц не обходить. Дивно мені, що тобі сумління дає спати. Але, мабуть, сни твої страшні. Там і крики, і бурі, і ліси валить. Тим виттям пагорби до тебе кричать. Жалібно голосять. Рятуй свою матір. And then the letters stop. The piece of music is titled Josefa's Lament. Lament is uh, a, a word with a meaning associated with a, an emotional or crying out response to a situation. The lament is in Josefa's letters and it's in the music and they are connected by family members. My father composed the piece in his early 20s, 22 years old. There is only one recording that was ever made, and that one recording was made when my father played this composition in the room of his mother's flat in London. In the room present would have been his sister, Zosha Sophie. 1972, so he would play this composition on his mother's piano and his mother is Josefa's daughter, he is Josefa's grandson 
and Yosefa's granddaughter is in the room recording it. And then this recording gets put into a bag and effectively lost and forgotten about for the next 43 years. The letters and, and the cassette were part of a number of artifacts that were discovered after my father's sister, Auntie Sophie, passed away in 2014, leaving behind um, what can only be described as a uh, massive, huge amount of stored possessions that she had accumulated over, over her life this music and letters. The two were found in the same location in the same time and they seem to join uh, and complement each other as almost synonyms of each other. When I started making the research and the history, I realized it's not such a personal story because it's the story of so many people. So the performance is a trying to summarize the research and the expressions of this research so far. These are some of the more specific reasons why Yosefa was removed from her homeland and that then is the legacy of how we think about what these effects are when these huge egos are locked in battle for some new world order. <laughs>